Here we are nearly a week on from when I made my original upload on this subject, which was Sunday, um, talking about this week's pre-planned pro-Palestinian rally, whatever it is, protest march, bleedy bleedy blah, whatever it is. Um, and the political and media class all week have been sabre rattling and thumping their bleeding, well, top thumping really, haven't they? Yes, and bashing their shields, saying, oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and something else is going to happen. And we've had that sweller braverman come out and have a pop at Mark Rowley, the chief constable of whatever he is, in the Metropolitan Police jurisdiction up in your London town. And honestly, it's just a load of hooey. Um, I'm going to bring class into it again because the political media class all tend to be middle class, upper middle, don't they? If not, some of them are elite. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the owners are, aren't they? But they literally have got no idea what they're talking about. So we're going to jump in together and listen to all this lot. Yes, we are. Here we go. For the, for the good number of Second World War veterans who are still alive today, and, you know, who's very marched few. down Whitehall so very many times few. proudly, you know, and solemnly, you know, the, the Senate... There's very few. There's just about a few people left that are actually born during the war. So the people born during the war are now in their 80s. Do you get me, Capiche? So, yeah, whatever, move on. ...in the most sacred spot in Britain. And they and their comrades fought to def defend our rights and freedoms, yeah. including, of course, that freedom... Yes, of course, we all know that. And they'll be forgiven for wondering, mm -hmm. is this actually, you know, is this the Britain that they fought to defend? And we saw, we've seen the Cenotaph disgracefully, you know, draped in Palestinian flags after a previous month. Right, well, I'm going to stop you there because we also saw it defaced by the BLM movement during the lockdown, didn't we? Who all got a free s swerve, didn't they? Because it was our eth ethnic brethren backed up by the uh, loony lefty, again, a load of middle class bleeding, rent a mob, that all went out on behalf of uh, BLM and, yeah, completely trashed the Cenotaph. The whole situation that's going on up there is actually a nothing burger. And, I mean, you've got to give them some sort of kudos to the media because they've really been plugging this all week. It's been their main talking point. The, the fact on, on um, Saturday, we've got the two-minute silence because, obviously, that is 11th of the 11th. And it was the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month when the arms finally, the guns stopped firing, basically. Which is why it's called armistice, ceasefire, another word for now, the pro-Palestinian rally, and don't get me wrong, I have literally not got a dog in the game. I can't stand any of these people, to be honest. I mean, and the other funny thing is that not long ago, we weren't allowed to criticise this particular religion, were we? Not in any way, shape or form. They were strictly held in reverence, yes, by the media and political class. I mean, I don't know what religion they are, because I'm not really up on these things. Are they Buddhists? Is it all the Buddhists? that are all protesting about Palestine. Uh, there's so many more people that aren't any religion. They're, they're, they're for the children. They're worried, like most of us, about the children being genocided. Whether they're Israeli or they're Gazan, it doesn't matter. They're children. Children should be our first, absolutely our first priority at every situation, not a, like the media and political class actually... Um, uh, present it as a sort oh well you know civilians do get hurt no we're not talking about civilians we're talking about children okay that's my my only point on this so the majority of people are there because they want to cease far and they want some common sense to prevail and maybe get round the table and talk obviously it's got to start by the Gazan people the Buddhists that live in Gaza have got to let the um Hostages go. Obviously, that goes without saying, of course, should never have happened. They need to let the hostages go. But equally, the Buddhist people who uh, are now shooting them. Uh, no, they're not. It's the oh, it's the uh, Israeli Defence Force, isn't it? Yeah, they've got to back off as well. So the Buddhists need to stop sh firing missiles at Jerusalem and the Israeli Defence Force need to stop shooting the Gazan people and bombing their buildings. They just stop. Just everybody stop. But moving towards this Palestinian rally, which was mooted last weekend, uh, it was never intended to be anywhere near the Cenotaph. And I, what I gather is going to be tomorrow afternoon. Now, the two-minute silence will be at 11 o'clock, on the 11th of the 11th, as I say. They're starting their rally at 1 o'clock, and it's not going to be anywhere near the Cenotaph. So all this... 
uh, talking, oh, just smack talking about it, and scandalising and what if in all week. And then it came to pass that the Football Fans Alliance were going to march as well in support of, well, the other side, support of the other part of the narrative. Don't ask me what it is, but they wanted to do it. Now, the Football Fans Alliance are usually uh, predominantly working class. But to be honest, you're not working class nowadays if you can afford to go and see a league football match. Most working class people support the local teams nowadays because the local teams nowadays are like the, the big leagues used to be before the money people moved in. Um, I see in my local town, our little local football team for years was a non-entity. And now it's a big pull for all the local uh, men that have worked hard all week to go and stand and watch, you know, their team play. And they m might play another local town. It's just a small thing. And if they do watch a league football, it's usually on the telly. So the Football Fans Alliance isn't full of football hooligans, which is what they're saying now, which I told you they would. They, they're far right and they're football hooligans and this, that and the bleeding other. Nothing more about the Buddhists. They don't say anything about the Buddhists singing their, their mantras that I won't repeat on here. No, that's all gone now. They're now mooting the fact that, well, we've got the football. Thugs are coming into town and they're going to march. They're far right. They're just working class lads that probably nobody ever represents them. Nobody ever represents their opinion. And I reckon their opinion is probably pretty much the same as everybody else's opinion. Can everybody stop shooting each other? And especially stop bleeding, shooting and killing kids and bombing them. Anyway, let's move on because this gets really quite hysterical. Because it's like I keep thinking... It wasn't long ago that you really weren't allowed to say one single thing against religion, especially the Buddhist faith. Oh, no, you're not. No. And now they're the bogeymen all of a sudden voodoo because it suits their narrative. They're up to no good. What they're up to, I do not know. But I know they're not up to their necks in no good. Yes. Come on. A couple of weeks ago, the prime minister has acknowledged that there's a real risk of the cenotaph and other war memorials could be desecrated. Yes. And most importantly, I think also not well, equally importantly, that the two minute silence at 11 a.m. Mm. will be disrupted. And the yeah. risk of that is to be worse. Oh, look, I'm very serious now. People are going down there and saying, <laughs> no, you will not be doing this, and that's going to end in tears, isn't it? Exactly. No, so, look, yeah, you're what is the right. answer? What is the answer, Rafe? I mean, is the answer to either ban the march and then people like you quite rightly say will say, oh, well, we haven't got uh, uh, free speech? Or is it that they should be moving it to another area and not allowing it to happen? Anyway. I would say they all actually know that it was always, uh, that's why the chief commissioner, whatever his name is, Mark Rowley, so whatever, said it could go ahead because he's like on the ground, he knows what's going on. Uh, these people don't. Suella Bleeden Braverman, Bleeden Braverman, Cowderman, more like, uh, the so-called home Bleeden secretary, um, has said that he needs to get his finger out and he needs to ban the protest, but she doesn't really know. And since, well, it's again, I'm going to keep saying it, all of a sudden it's highly fashionable to criticise a particular ethnicity who are being mooted as the main protagonists when really they're not. There's a cross-section of everybody. And it does make me rather laugh because, you see, the Buddhists, well, politically, <laughs> religiously they're Buddhists, but politically they're very far, fundamentally far right, you see. They really are, you know, and you can swap the word Buddhist for any other religion that I'm not prepared to say. Right. So it is really quite funny. And they're marching with all the, the drippy hippies and the lefty loonies and the, oh, what, what is it? LGBTQ rights for Palestine and all this nonsense. It's hysterical. So it's like the cat with the mouse all marching together to save, to save, I don't know. To save the rat, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's just absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, so, and they're getting themselves in a right old bleed div of this lot because they've got my 24-hour re revolving news. It was never going to end well, was it? So, they are the news. They create the news. They become the talking points. They're not actually reporting anything accurate because it was never going to be anywhere near the cenotaph. And I think they know that, but they just enjoy making a lot of hooey about nothing. We're near the cenotaph. No. Well, I'm a free speech fundamentalist. Oh, you mean, so this no. is not an attack on the freedom to protest. Yeah. No. Uh, but they've had the freedom to protest for all of the days that they wanted to. You know, 363 right. days of the yeah. year, except for Armistice Day and Remembrance Sunday. Oh, Sunday I see. There's exceptions now, is there? Preserved. 
So they, you know, all of a sudden, all the funerals that they want to, but also actually, just like jobs. Yeah, but they, you didn't say anything when they were doing it during the lockdown up the cenotaph. It's BLM. You didn't say anything then, did you? It's completely okay then because, well, that was a talking point, wasn't it? That was a distraction. Let's all get on board. Go on. The war and extinction rebellion. The freedom to protest has to be balanced against the rights of other people. So why aren't we doing? Oh, this? shush. If I can just say, what makes this even more important is that we have to also accept the rights of Jews and others to be able to walk on the streets exactly. of London. Of course, it's also anti-British exactly. anyway. It's just anti-British. Let, 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 let me ask you just as a... Uh... But the, look, the section of that protest that you're referring to, and it's a small section, have been anti-bleeding British like forever and a day. You know? It's made up, it's not just a cohort of like-minded people, it's made up of a lot of different people that are there for a lot of different reasons. But I would say the average and overriding reason the majority of the people are there, are they're marching for the children and for the citizens that are being bombed indiscriminately and having their lives just ruined and moved out into the Sinai Desert, which was the plan all along. Uh, that's my opinion, I'm entitled to my opinion. So... You know, this is actually, well, they're just making a bleeding pig's ear of everything as usual, aren't they? To be fair, they are. Yes? Come on, dear. Stop buffing and buffing. Historian. Why have our police become so frightened of minorities? We live in a democracy, and the democracy means that the majority Hang on. get to have their point of view. But Hang on. Great... When you talk about the minorities, they were fantastic not more than like a month ago. Yeah, anybody working class was like, shoot on the bottom of your shoe. They were just a load of thugs, as you always say they are. Any time they have any sort of protest, they are always discriminated against in a massive way and spoken down to and patronised and actually scandalised and lied about. Um, and of no, um, nothing that any of their points of view are ever, you know, credible, in your opinion, the media class's opinion. But... Just stop oil, Extinction Rebellion, these protests. Oh, it's absolutely fine. But now, what I've seen in the last sort of fortnight or so is the movement towards abs absolutely rubbishing a particular ethnicity. Uh, the majority of which aren't on this march. <laughs> oh dear, it's so complex. It's like pick-up sticks, you know, the kids' game. And you're trying to pick up each stick and examine what exactly is going on. And of course... As I say, the political and medical class that make their living and earn their salaries out of this sort of crap, they're full throttle at the moment, aren't they? They just get in there and mix the pot as much as they possibly can. Just say anything and they don't actually, they're not actually um, held accountable for their rhetoric, are they, VooTube? Great democracy, because yeah. every other bugger wants to come and live here. Oh, well, you know, whether it's. Do you think you're allowed to say things like that not long ago? Room, or whether it be this example that we have. I'm confused. Here, what we're seeing are a police force and indeed all of our institutions that have been petrified by political correctness for yeah. the best part of 30 or 40 years. Right. And they don't know what to do. And we've seen clear evidence now over the course of the well, last. Well, it's been made politically correct to, to slag off anybody working class. And anybody working class has got any sort of opinion. Uh, also, what's her name? Kelly Jane Keane. She was seen as working class, though so she isn't working class. She was seen as down at heel. No one stood up for her. I know, like, Julia Hartley lives above the brewery, but, I mean, you know, when old Julia starts flapping her gums. To be honest, by the time she gets to the end of the bleeding question, I've forgotten what the question is. Come on. Ralph Haydel Manku. He's a British historian, you know. The seventh of the Amazing. policing that we have now in this country, whereby if you protest certain causes... You're treated with kid gloves in yes. the DNC, where you're allowed yes. to shout jihad yeah, but in you're the streets a... as a member of a group. Yeah, of... but you lot do it as well. You lot do it as well. When they had all that free, what's his name, movement the other other year, when they made a, an example of, um, what's his name, Steve Lennon. Yeah, you, you didn't say anything. You rubbished everybody. They were just working class people. They didn't have a lot of money, but they got themselves up to London to stand up for what they believed in. You know, uh, I think some of them hard coaches and you had the coaches companies stop or um, refuse to bring them or whatever. Something or other, a load of old nonsense. Oh, it's all all right then. I get it. I get it. So it's all down to it's all down to what the narrative is at any given moment. Yes. And probably who's paying them to say it. Go on, Rafe. It's prescribed in many countries in the world. But if you go on the including this one, one as we yes. saw, you were, there, there were 150 arrests during the 2020 lockdown march. There was a small EDL march that had 150 arrests. We saw what happened in What's that... What's an EDL march? Shut up. Sarah Everard, the girl who was murdered by, uh, mm. by Wayne Cousins. They beat the living uh, crap out of the women. There. 
With this march with 100,000 people, we've had no more than 10 people arrested at any of those single marches. And that's a disgrace. You know, when well, at the end of the day, the police are the police. And I must admit, yeah, the feminisation of the police force and the woke karate that are within the police force, they do tend to take on the wrong people that really couldn't, you know, stand up for themselves. You know, they couldn't, they can't. So they're down on numbers. And a lot of the guys that march um, in a particular ethnicity, let's just say they're Buddhists, and they're um, supporting their Buddhist brothers that they see, see or believe they see being subjugated by uh, another and more powerful force in the Middle East. Um, a lot of these guys are pretty healthy, you know, in the prime of their life. <laughs> guys, you know, <laughs> you could say they're of army age, if you know what I mean, most of them. So the police do have to weigh up what they're doing because they're out well, they're out forced by them, really, aren't they? If you know, it's all right when they're up against bleeding a ve load of vegans. Uh, what do you call them? Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Boils. You know, they're, what is this? Soy latte is a bit too much for them lot, isn't it? They can handle people like that. They can't handle full-on people. <laughs> Rabbit, foaming at the mouth. Uh, yeah, so they try and keep the peace by managing them, almost like babysitting them. Uh, just let them march and hopefully they go home. I think is their idea. I'm not sticking up for them because I don't care, but, you know. Well, Tracy Oberman, the actress, tweeted about this last week. She asked the policeman why they've been treating these protesters with kid gloves. She was told there's simply too many haters. Yeah. And mm. it's root. This is deeply anti-Semitic. And, of course, it's a, it's a cultural thing because I haven't seen... I know they've had some sort of rally, the Jewish population, but really, maybe they should have a march as well. But just on a different day. Obviously, I'm not advocating for on the same day because that could get a bit sticky. Oh, we could be on a sticky wicket food too. We don't want that, do we? But uh, maybe it's a cultural thing that the Jewish uh, faith, Jewish uh, ethnicities don't want to march or, or they do it different. They do silent vigils or whatever, this, that and the other. Whereas the pro-Palestinian people, whether it's a particular religious um, people involved in it, as I say, i.e. the, in air quotes, uh, the Buddhists, or people that are just normal, everyday people, or I don't mean normal like that, but in other words, are Buddhists. Uh, uh, yeah, they they march in a different way. They oh, they just get more passionate, don't they? So it's a mixed up, muddled up, shook up world, isn't it? As I so very often say on here, oh my God, my brain is aching trying to work out what's going bleeding on here. Dear me, stop, for God's sake, in the name of all things holy. are emboldening these but why? I mean, you did probably hear the breaking news we just mm. found, that a Met Police advisor led from the River to the Sea chant. A hard-left activist who was filmed doing this um, is a pro-Palestinian, at a pro-Palestinian rally, is advising... Is a hard-left activist. Well, you say, James Well doesn't know what he's on about. A hard-left activist. If he's singing that rallying uh, call sign... The Palestinian, they're fundamentalists. So that's just BS and everything fundamental. It's like fundamental Christians like neocons. They're on the far side of the right. Nothing to do with the far left. So, yeah, you know, they should stop flopping their gums, really, shouldn't they? You know, but then what are they going to do? Because they all make a hell of a lot of money. out of Sat around all day chatting a load of old tosh. It takes two of them to do this programme, doesn't it? So <laughs> to the Metropolitan Police. Mm. I mean, well, it remember, is belief. If you, if you remember the tweets that were coming out from the Met last week, they were choosing to find the most lenient interpretation for this ISIS flag and the jihad, and they said, we have experts here who are telling us. Well, well the, the expert... Was, we, 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 the expert was this... Uh, um, I, think he, I think he's from the Gaza, Palestinian... Um, originally Palestinian solicitor that works as a, an advisor on all things Buddhist, let's say, air quotes, for the Metropolitan Police. So they got him in because they don't understand Arabic. And he was going, no, they don't mean it like that. You know? <laughs> so it's kind of naivety on the part of the police service, isn't it? I mean, basically, they go to work. They just want to go to work, get their job done and go home. They don't need all this. And we, none of us citizens in this country, need all this bleed narrative and this rhetoric that's coming out of the media, political and media class, because the politicians are all blamed. Oh, look, that's popular. Look, oh, there's a passing bandwagon. I better get on it and say something. Here I am. I'm here. I'm saying something. Oh, it'd be better if they all said nothing. You could say that it would be better if I said nothing too. So with that, I'm going to say bye-bye now.